Every fast rather it back again with ambition. Let's just dive in to see where we left off. Military party, right. We've done one of these previously, so we've got we could you call a fourth memory to it is of the time when you and our man first met. Useful. Uh sister of three man says everything about brother over here. Again, this is I think this is gonna be similar to one we had last time. That's a risk. Uh um, doo -doo. Gossip, do 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 Right. I'm going to go with this one, just so I'll see what happens. Bit of the conversation. You wander around the party for a while, trying to find a conversation that feels right, but only end up feeling lost. Rather than wasting time on something that isn't working, you decide to take some time to yourself. It's been a difficult for all day, and you're not and you're not certain as to why. Thankfully, you managed to find a deserted corner so you can focus on yourself. While you're adjusting to your... While you're adjusting your your stays your stay so that you sit more comfortably, you consider your poor luck is not you. It's just it, it's not just it's not you. It's just that nobody has anything exciting to say right now. Filthy house. This feels certainly familiar. Of course, when you you last felt like this, the parties were much smaller. They were also much less elegant, and even felt less exciting than the ones you're attending right now. In fact, you were just as such a party bored, bored to the verge of tears and making conversations with yourself when you heard someone walking up behind you. I'm sorry, I didn't realise this spot was taken. I was pl I was planning on fuming alone in the garden, but an occupier's already laid their, laid their claim. Don't waste your time dissembling, just join me already. Correct, be now be gone. Uh, yeah, you didn't know. Yeah, you didn't know him, but you knew this routine well enough. It's normally the part where they called you a frigid woman and either stayed to insult you further or merely stormed away. Instead, he listens to you and laughs. Okay, well, yeah, you gained some favour with this handsome stranger. My apologies, fair brooding woman. When I said I didn't expect anyone here, that was just an idle jest. I love our town here and its people, but that doesn't mean they can't try my patience sometimes. Everyone here just feels like it's going around in a circle, like a water wheel. The waters of the river rush onward to new things, but the wheel merely spins. Um, my, my apologies, I never introduced myself. My, my, my name is Armand. Our man never mentioned his last name to you, or even that he was a baron until the third time you met. He pretended it, that it, it was because he thought it was unimportant, but he knew better he was sick of the deference and groveling that came with his position. May I name your, uh, yeah, Yvette. He takes your hand and kisses the back of it. Normally such an overfully gesture would disgust you, but, it's all, but he does it with light, practiced grace, like it was the most normal thing in the world. The two of you stare each other's eyes. As your gaze as your gaze plays along along his moonlight features, you wonder you wonder how you've both managed to stay go so long without meeting. Now you've heard my woes, what troubles you? What what does it what doesn't trouble me? The whole place is going nowhere, it's just infuriating. Uh before you realise it you find yourself a mauling list of every M enemy Enmity that you've had in this town, punctured by everyone of your mental failings, it's a long list. I thought myself of it, but it seems I have a mere pretender, I'm a mere, or is a mere pretender to the only last, he lasts with the cold and causes you to shiver. More favours with our husband, if we can ever find a guy. Fortunately, I must go, my presence will be missed, however, before I go, please take this, it's a frightful cold out here. He says, taking off his coat and handing it to you, he, his breath stem, steams in the air and his coat, his coat is still warm with his body heat. Should you should you feel the need to return, I spend my Sundays reading at La Sigan. Sigan. He's just gesture in the direction of the tavern. With that arm on the leaves, when the breeze blows and you feel a breeze shiver. So you wrap, up, wrap, wrap his coat about your shoulders, the collar smells like him, mixed with a trace of perfume. Like all members, it begins to dissolve once the most important elements pass. It's such a pleasant memory from simpler times. Yeah, but you may return your thoughts here and now you cannot manage to completely discard the memory. You find yourself examining its various details long after you, you distantly puzzle upon its significance. With that, you return to the party. Right, let's see what we got. We've got 
So that's season one of the value of Gossip the Young is updated by a pre- presumptuous interloper. Which re- uh, perhaps is a way to re- evade his rude questions and claim your prize in time. Well, we've got a woman here, apparently used to work with Pierre. Yep, yeah, we know that's one from earlier. As a fellow huntress of gossip and rumours, could be useful. Uh, Sister Artillery, man, that's similar to the conversation we had last time we were here. Uh, uh, Corporal Devonor seems to have heard something about that's bothering him. Cheap ground gossip. Mm. Shocking military gossip, cheap military gossip. Let's go with... Mm. Let's go with this one, actually. Crown and... It's cheap, uh, Peril there. We got any peril on that one? Yeah. We could get so we get, we can go we can lose credibility and gain no credibility. Or with this one we can we can gain between mo okay. We'll go and go with this one. You approach the woman who's been eyeing the other guests in a particular familiar familiar way. In fact, it's that it's the exact way you look at guests in, at these functions, she looks up at you. If that decry take it she say she has sipping on a glass of white wine. A fine assessment. I thought so. You seem to have matched all the rumours I've heard. My name is Anne de Quam Quasmer. We're both acquainted with Pierre Renot, the fun little man, isn't he? He worked for him as a rumour monger for a long time before his boss passed away and bequeathed him the newspaper. I've heard that he's, he's, he's even gone as far to promote you to being his journalist. Either way, he has a very difficult and either, either that was very difficult or he's getting desperate. What's Pierre doing, by the way? Does he still gamble like a madman? Oh no, he doesn't even drink anymore. I hear the Pope might have had, have him canonised. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, can you imagine she, she she laughs? I once saw the man wager a full wages on a wig louse racing. Mm. Normally you think it actually was joking, but this is Pierre we're talking about. By the way, I'm, I'm not certain what you're doing here tonight, but I'm here to interview Comte de Boulain, uh, Boulon Villiers. I mean, he doesn't know it. It's an interview, but that's, in, that's not important. Simply put, I need to find something interesting related to military. Can I trust you to stay out of my way? What you say, I ain't... What, what, what you say, I ain't... You and I ain't film together. Together, we'll cover every angle. Uh, you're saying something worth writing about. Thanks for the tip. Interview them together. I think not. I have. I have, would have to be completely to let you take this prize away from my. I've even started. She replies, cold, calm and cold. Oh, great. We're going to business now, but don't even dare to try and follow me. She hisses at you in tow. That's even. That even you find quite forbidding. And leaves, and you're left trying to figure out what you'll do for the rest of the party. You're certain. You're, you certainly won't be following her anytime soon. Well, that was a complete bot bust, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's very easy, it's very difficult to gain credibility, but very easy to lose it. Very easy to lose it. Right, 13th Avril, 1789. Charles Mance de, de Talleyrand, Perigotis, or simply Talleyrand, is a f- figure much dis- in, of much discussion in France. Born as at the ski onto a powerful noble family, Talleyrand's foot was maimed at an early age in an accident. Unable to participate in the dance of his courtiers or march adequately enough to serve in the military, he was doing useless to it by his family, thus he was sent into the priesthood like many unwanted sons of the nobility. While he has fulfilled his duties to the church well, he has been the subject of much scandal. Talleyrand believes that he embodies a modern system of Catholic values, including his preference towards the needs of the common people of the nobility. However, these modern views seem, seem to be dismissive of his vows of celibacy. Despite the infirmities that caused his family to dismiss him, dismiss him he's, been, he's still been considered quite desirable by many women in France due to his kindness, erudite, erudition and snappy witticisms. However, actual advancement of the church has evaded him for a long time. While it's, while it's well, well known that he's impatiently waiting for the Archbishop Bar- uh, Borge to finally join the heavenly host, telling him that he also has had his eye on the Bishop of post of Bishop of Orton. Fortunately for him, it seems that Talleyrand's prayers have gone unanswered. While the Bishop of Orton has moved to Lyon, he's selected a different successor to the post. This has left the ambitious Talleyrand fuming and the more orthodox members of, his clerk of, this, of the clergy laughing behind his back. 
behind their hands. Church came, the churches gained power, the churches moved towards decline a little. Okay. It appears that traditionalists in the church have won this down. The revolution has lost a chance to have a powerful ally. And so, in Paris, life goes on. So if we look at journal, we look at cheap boys where gossip uh, one day. So this is fine on that. We've, we've achieved that. Faction power. Nothing to say there really. Well, let's go into the calendar. We're now in Ludovicio. One day view with us. Let's go to the wardrobe. Uh, let's go with provincial dress. One day view. After spending the first half of the decade, so where do you head out for your rendezvous? Fortunately, feel like the looks in setting as usual. Again. That credibility is a killer. Back in winning if it's somewhere different. Yeah, we know about this place. If I, same time as just approaches you. Yep, usual. Stands a little bit further away, so we don't cotton on together. Alpha blessed you from look upon you, says with a smile, and catches your his eyes you catch his eyes lingering lingering in a few choice places. You've gained a staggering amount of faith, but when are we gonna use it? How do we use this favour with this person? Look, he takes his gaze off you, examines your location. Look at Vicky's light, eyes light up when he looks at the civil landscape. Okay, yep, we've been here, it's the third time we've been here, mate, come on. Uh, young priest, absolutely blur, yep. Yeah, so it's basically the same, yeah. Do, 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 yeah, that's the same one I've had so far, right. Now, yesterday uh, there was a hot air balloon launch on the lawn at the Palace of Vertar. This the public is absolutely fascinated by these machines, but though you remain unconvinced. These balloons invented by the Mongolfia, Mon, Mongolfia brothers were which richly decorated in the King's heraldry. Apparently it was quite a sight. In fact, the King himself decided at the last minute to ride along and ascend the first balloon. Witnesses have lovingly described the King as standing astride the heavens like a demigod of an, an antiquity. The Mon Mongolfia have been showered with praise for both their achievements towards the sciences and the prestige of the royal household. <laughs> So the bourgeois uh, the crowns gained power, the bourgeois the bourgeoisie is most close, close to, to the crown. And so life in Paris goes on. So if we look at the if we go back into our journal, we look at we know about this guy. This guy's it's clear uh this guy's clearly kind of got the ops for us. So the bourgeoisie Yes yeah, so the bourgeoisie is still they're still relatively hand in hand with the revolution but maybe not as much now but anyway calendar events explore paris we've got naval architecture research and maximum the pearls of journalism what are you, the pearls of journalism we've got over here we've got the maid and the archer naval architecture necessary honesty let's go with this one not everyone visits Paris as, uh, as a wise simplicity that you've gotten used to. Some far more blunt, however, it's not that not always a bad thing. Uh, visit the location. You've had to spend the day wandering the wandering the fountain square. It's a warm day and plenty of people will be congregating there, usually, which usually means it's a good place to find for finding information. Perhaps you'll be able to find something that Pierre would find valuable. You see the air and everyone here already looks like they've had someone they have someone to talk to, which is concerning approaching a stranger is easier, approaching a group of them by yourself is far more daunting. Curse the audacity of these strangers, how dare they have friends. It's Batman who's taken just taken a seat by himself at the table of a nearby cafe. He spread out a great sheet of paper and weighs him down way down the corners weighing down and weighed down the corners with empty saucers. You approach him but he doesn't acknowledge you at first. He appears to be totally lost in the document from the looks of it. It's kind of diagonal blueprint. The exact details are lost in you. Ah, oh, bon bonjour, madame, he says, without looking up. His, is, his accent is foreign, but un you're unable to place it. It either sounds Austrian or Hungarian. My name is Christoph, if that's what you're about to, if that's what you were going to ask. What business, it, what business is it that you have here? <laughs> Mm. 
indulging in curiosity what are you doing well i'm studying a 400 year 400 year old church of turban why it hasn't fallen down despite the lack of renovations in the last hundred years this priest has insisted to me that this is a miracle but i can't imagine lord using miracles to reward a century of shoddy maintenance just yes, uh, to the chair across room please take a seat you do so settling finally feeling a little more comfortable in the situation kind of thrill is up but we know he's easy, easy it is to lose credibility you gain a little more credibility. Without taking his, without his taking his eyes off the document, he waves over a waitress and orders you some coffee. You, when it arrives, you take a sip. It is coffee sweet, strong and hot. It is quite invigorating. You've lost the level of exhaustion. That's useful to know. Judging from your own trust in the affairs of stranger, you also imagine you have a thirst for, thirst for gossip, yes. But while this is true, you're not sure if he had put it quite... It, you're, not, you're not sure if he had put it quite so cynically. <laughs> To that end, would you prefer to learn something interesting about the military or the revolution? Uh, revolution. As I suspect, he says, here's what I've learned. He says, next few minutes, detail some gossip in the revolution. It's certainly an interesting story, but something about the whole exchange feels rather untoward. Without the pre pre pretense of intrigue, it seems heartless and mercantile. You've gotten a, you've gotten a piece of shocking revolutionary gossip. You've lost some credibility. <laughs> I'm not sure I like how easy it is to link it, you lose credibility. It just seems we, we, it seems so easy to lose it. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure I like that, but anyway. The two of you talk a little longer, but the conversation eventually winds down. He pauses to check his pocket watch and says, I said, but I must head to the Bastille if I'm to study. Study it, I will need to do so before I lose sunlight. Von Madame he says, before he packs up his materials and drops some coins on the table for your prospective refreshments. Departing to sadly as well before it gets too dark. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure I'm convinced on the credibility thing. Alright. We've been offered a 226. Accept. Close one is that. That's down there. That's fine. We've got to get... We've got to get that sorted. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to explore Paris. We've lost our exhaustion. We are going to visit... The trumpet de pur de purpel. See this see this fella. Sell our gossip. Alright, so what's this shocking of English gossip? That a trio of third state delegates in Paris for the state general were detained by the Goat Goat Royale. Were the Goat harassing one woman or forced to act war? Well, okay. Uh sell the gossip. If I sell it uh there's no chance there should be no chance. Okay, uh, let, okay let's do it. Alright, uh Fresh, let's sell this gossip. One in twenty, I'll find with that. I think better exactly this kind of uh, slicious trash art. I'd steam would require. I'll take care to award you properly, great. Sell the gossip, one in ten chance, yes, flog it. Alright, go home. It's one day done. Okay. Right. Let's explore Paris again. Right, we're searching Max Maximin. We've got Pearls of Journalism, Unwilling Confessor. Right, okay. I'm going to do this first and then we'll look at the one, we'll look at one of these. Because they don't seem to go away. You've heard, you head to La La Hals, hoping to recognize some information regards to a mysterious servant who suddenly and quite left the employ of your hatred for Baron Max Maximin. Maxim in it, Maxim in, Maxim in, anyway, this fella, visit location, okay. You walk the streets in the marketplace, Le, uh, Le Hals, and just listen. Porters, comrades, and servants bustle to and fro, they haggle and exchange coins for wares, and occasionally lean in to slyly share the most interesting and scandalous news of the day. The marketplace buzzes with activity like a beehive. A man stands on the corner reading the latest current events allowed from a newspaper to and he passes by willing to listen sometimes people throw a coin in his hat place and the hat placed at his feet far from the nobility this feels the right place to inquire about maxim 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 means mystery servant and the man that corner feels like a good place to start Patchman shouting he's put our course to news by shoppers. Only a few people have stopped to actually listen to him. His clothes look like they're, f they're a fine make, but they're old enough. But they're old enough to be in a state of disrepair. 
the state general approaches representatives from the third state expected expected demand changes to the noble privileges. Uh, jo Joseph Michael Mongolfier designed a new fly balloon. A moment, Monsieur took a toss of coin in the hat. Ah, oh, merci, Madame the Choir says to you, feigning appropriate amount of surprise. He holds his false opinion, his newspaper tucks under one arm. You have spent one livre. Uh, I'm looking for dirt on Baron. Know anything? Oh, that is quite the mystery. Nobody asked you, nobody asked about the Mr. Servant agreement for a while. He paused to think for a moment before continuing. I remember my cousin tried to claim that the servant had committed murder in cold blood, but it turned out to be a pack of lies. So I remember now the servant is still in the city somewhere working at a cafe. The good Baron threatened the owner to fire the servant, but the cafe owner wouldn't budge. <laughs> At the right time, I'm a total I'm at a loss, madam. Now you must excuse me, I must return to my work. He unfolds the newspaper and returns yelling to the crowd and soliciting do donations. Mr. Servant, you know, works in a cafe. There must be over 100 cafes in Paris. How are you, how are you supposed to find the servant? Dad, you'll need, little, you'll need a little more information before you can track the person down. You decide to ask around the marketplace. Dalvin to marketplace poppy talked to various merchants trying to learn a little more. It's like fishing in a river for one particular fish, however, you walk away with one valuable piece of information. All of the servants who suddenly left Maxim, Maxim, Maximin's employee were men ex except for this one, the mystery servant is a young woman. Not, not only that, she's a woman with eyes that have different colours, from which other it's said to be quite striking to behold. You've never heard anything like that before, but it's certainly possible if anything else it would make this person quite distinct, however, there are over a million people in Paris. All this knowledge is fresh in your mind, you take out your drill and might everything down, everything down you've learned. Maximum is a mystery servant, now works in a cafe in Paris. There's you know, a woman with eyes that are different colours from each other. So sadly, but you still have ways to go before you can use it to hurt Maximum. You have a vital clue for finding Maximum's weakness, however you'll need to figure out where to search next and on your own. Done for the day, you return home to plan your next move. Oh, okay. 17 Herbal, 17 89. Right, we've got to get the parties then. We've got to go here. Let's. let's uh, I don't want to do that. Pick okay. Hang on. What? 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 Return to the estate. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, we can plan it. We can plan a rendezvous. Let's plan a rendezvous with him then. Let's go plan a. Pick the location. Hang on. Let's return to the estate. We need to find a new location for old meeting our, meeting our man, don't we? Let's make that a point today. So this is a willing confessor. The Grand Tenever Londres. Let's try this one. Looks your best on this one of the location case from the wealthiest, most powerful clientele in all Paris. Visit the location. Mm. Now, if I hadn't suspended exploring past you, your wanderings take you to the 12th Avondizement. If Just as you feel you'll become used to the city's mirror, it smells your nose managed to pick up a new surmise, surprising scent, favourable yet subtle, laid with but restrained. You smelled good food before, but this is entirely something else entirely. Quicken your pace, you, f you find a sign that reads La Grande Taverne Landres. It's slightly puzzling whether it looks nothing like the rustic taverns you've seen elsewhere in France. Inside you find a dining room brightly lit by crystal chandeliers furnished with mahogany tables draped in fine linen tablecloths. If you ask the look up from the table and you suddenly feel rather underdressed in your day clothes. You pull out a journal and jot the address down. This place that prefers to visit someone who cares about fine food details so it prefers... Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, let's go with that one. So you it's chatting with staff, perusing the menu for heading home. Visions of a feast dancing ahead, perhaps you'll be able to return sometime soon. Right. Okay. Right, okay. Uh, to join. Accept. Close us then. You want to there again? Mm, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? Okay. We need to know. We need to. We need to work out. I need to work out what we can do with this bloke. Do we get a journal? So he's, we can't. We can't do anything with him. Uh, available. Notables. So we can't do anything. Like we can't. 
Hmm. We've got favours, but how do we use these favours? I don't see how we can use these favours. It doesn't really kind of help us out, does it, really? Okay, I'm sure it'll come up at some point. Anyway. Calendar. We need to get that down. But we said, oh, let's explore Paris. Okay. Our cafe principle, we've got naval architecture, unwilling confessor, providing for the poor. Let's right, let's do this one and then we'll do that one. Cafe principle, naval architecture, home, a fabric shortage. Let's go with this one, providing for the poor. Priest here you know, you might know he's trying to raise money for us fortune, however. Visit we'll the location. Walking through the city, you notice whether it's perfectly fine, but something feels tense today. People are walking together in tight clusters. Nobody seems willing to meet each other's eyes. Then you hear, then you hear him yelling. That's when you hear, hear him yelling. I said, "It's off!" Screams a man at a young priest you recognise. Although other people in the streets surrounding the crowd are ignoring the two so th thoroughly that they might as well be in a different country altogether. All I did was ask for a donation. States Ludovic Young, gesturing gently with a wooden, small wooden donation box in his hands. Take it up with a hangman if you care so much, you greedy bloodsucker. Angry nationalist. Well, sure, why do you have so much venom for the poor? I have nothing but sympathy for my poor countrymen. It's you priests that I hate. You take our land, ignore our taxes, build yourself great churches of marble and gold. Then you have the audacity to ask us for money to help the poor. He's got a point, especially in, in revolutionary France anyway. The man spits on the ground. If your pope, pope cares so much, he can reach into his own pocket, not mine. But you and Ludovic are struck down by this display. Never in your life have you heard someone sp speak to a priest this way. But I'm sure his illness already put significant efforts towards fundraising aimed at. I swear, if I know that you say another word, I will thrash you. I said to his, uh, the church is doing something unlike the revolution. Uh, uh, let's go with that one. Thank you, Vet. Did go for first ten to you. All that matters is that good is done. You've got a little favour, Ludovic, but how do we use that favour? Fine, I don't want to waste my time on this. Both of you go somewhere else without the power. Without power, the poor will spend the rest of the days begging for scraps. Okay. I even don't even know who that is. Oh well. With that, sometimes, again, there's little things like that that you gain favour, but. I don't know what to do with that favour. I'm not sure how to use it. It doesn't really kind of regain favour, but to what aim? With that, the national storms are a few later. Ludovic finally managed to track sale. Bless you, but I was, I was certain that was going to come to violence. Heart still wears something. Catty and Ludovic spend some time walking around together. You walk, trade, uh, talk, trade book accommodations generally calm down. Eventually, the two of you part is thinking back on what transpired. You shake your head. Sometimes it feels like all of Paris is losing its mind. We didn't get anything from that at all. We didn't get. Oh, hang on. You said you look. You look up and say the hands come on knocking on your door. Good morning, madam. Yeah, but pay. Yeah, you pay for it. Leave us. Yep, good. Okay. All right. I don't do that then. Explore Paris. Corner. We don't have a corner objectives. Made in the Archer. A winning confessor. Cafe Principe. I'm going to save that one because I reckon that that way. I reckon that Let's go over here. Out in the suburb of Paris, uh, Gwintet Paradis is a rendezvous. That's another rendezvous location. Visit the location. I feel like you could use some fresh air. You decide to take your travels to the edge of Paris as much as you like the city, the change of pace is appreciated. Passing through a checkpoint at the city's out towards you, hear the sound of music and walkers laughter. Colonel Cun, you stumble on an idyllic looking establishment named Gringette Paradis. A band plays music while the patrons drink wine and dance. Sitting down at one of the rustic tables, you note that Gwing uh, you note down uh, the Gringette in your journal. Yep. Then beyond the course, actually, but it's a perfect place for those who want to relax. Yeah, well, uh, yep, fair enough, got home, okay. 
next day. Uh, exception. You might as well close. All right, we need to. We need to. We need to find. We need to find this. Uh, Cafe Princip, visit location. Passing the crowds, you walk into Cafe Princip and find yourself sitting opening your journal. You get ready to open your ears and start writing down some political news of the day. When you feel there, look, knew it was there, look, knew it. Different coloured eyes. Marguerite, uh, within a few moments, Marguerite is waiting to take your order. Welcome back, madame. You look in her eyes and something about it feels, it feels familiar and important. Let's just go straight to the point. It doesn't change. Her spine visibly straightens. Everything about her suddenly feels tense and stiff. I'm not sure what you're talking about. She says after a long pause. Uh, don't worry, I'm no friend of his. She exhales slowly, visibly relieved. That is good to hear, madame. Remy, the owner, has always been so good at protecting us. But the Baron, Baron de, Term, de Termes is a powerful man. I've always feared that Maxim will try to reach out to us by some other means. Uh... You mean us? I mean me and my son Gabriel. He's with me in the attic upstairs, pointing out the ceiling. Everything's, everything I've done has been to protect him. He's seven years old now, but he looks just like his father. Because his father's Maximum, that's why. Uh, after I asked for Maximum's service, I needed a job. However, getting the job as a servant usually requires a recommendation from your previous employer. Something Maximum would, I would have definitely withheld. But after weeks of looking, I found the cafe. And his last waitress only quit because she was getting married. He was desperate. I got the job along with a little room in the attic. Of course, Maxim wasn't happy with anything really, so he tried to pressure Remy into firing me. Uh, Maxim Min decried the cafe, convinced him to stop attending, and even got the great while to raid the place once. I was so scared of Remy would toss me out. I worked my fingers to the bone every single day for three months. The rest of Remy couldn't find me if I was a blessed employee I ever had. At the end of the three months, Remy didn't find me, and Maxine just gave up. As long as I stay here and don't take too, make, make too much noise, I'm safe. Eventually, all the rumours died down, a city of Paris lost interest in our little story. I suppose I should start at the beginning. I was 60 when I moved to Paris, and my family was born. I hoped I'd find someone to marry, maybe someone with better fortunes than ours. My cousin got me a job at, as a maid of all works in Maximum's household. A few months later, she started working at a different estate, and I was alone. She taps her chin, chin and thinks for a while, dredging up a discarded memory. I think that's where Maxim changed my name. I had, I had my name changed to Rose. It was more fashionable and made the most of. Most of the servants had had their names changed at one point or another. That's awful. I was young and even I knew Maxim was interested in me. Of course, I was smitten. A common girl trading coy glasses and little flirt flirtation with the band. The whole thing was so romantic and I wasn't old enough to understand that things like that don't really happen. That stings a little. We were getting together for a while. we were together for a while. Eventually, we made a mistake. I was pregnant. He was afraid. He was growing important politically, and even a legitimate child with a young maid didn't paint the picture of a serious revolutionary thinker. So he wanted me to keep it secret and get rid of Gabriel. She said, "I could, do, I could, I could do one, but I couldn't do the other. Never do the other." When Maximum found out his fury, he called me every name when I saw and said I was trying to ruin him. This man adore, this man I adore, just turned out to be turned on me in an instant. He told me that if I didn't get rid of Gabriel, that he'd accuse me of stealing, of me of stealing from him. She waits like that. Let, she waits. She waits to let that sink in. A servant get found guilty of stealing from an employee faces the death penalty, and most court street servants are guilty until proven innocent. So I did the only thing I could do. I fled, still pregnant, in the middle of the night, with anything I could carry, and slept in the streets for a month while I found, tried to find a job. I could never really go. I could never really go home because this would ruin my family. Still, I got to keep my son, and I got my real name back. Rose didn't really suit me. Uh, have you ever wanted to get revenge on Maximum? All the time. However, this is not possible for me. Not without. Endangering Gabriel, she states with a firmness and feel utterly immovable. Now, if you excuse me, I have to see other customers. M Margaret departs and lets you alone. As you try as you might, you, you manage to do full of relevant revolutions, think and talk politics with ag agitated strangers. A few, a few fruitless hours later, you head home. You find Maximum's weakness, but the trouble is 
that you don't know how, how to use it. You'll need to find a way to prove Maximum is Gabriel's father, but one that doesn't physically expose him to danger. But how? That's a very good point. You set your mind by sitting straight in bed, stuck by a bolt of realization. You need Gabriel to prove. You need Gabriel to prove that Maxim had a illegitimate child with Marguerite, and that he tried to destroy Marguerite's life forever. However, Marguerite won't let you do anything that might prove Gab put, might put Gabriel in harm's way, even if it like, gets their justice on Maximum. However, you don't need Gabriel in person to do that. You just need something that the public will find convincing. What if you had a painting? This would, of course, have to be a great painting. It would need to perfectly show the resemblance between Gabriel and his absentee father. It would also have to be made by an established painter, someone whose abilities were unpeachable. Reckon you're both an artist, such an artist, you keep coming back to the same name. My name you the third whispered over and over again in the halls and parties of saloons. Elizabeth Lebrun. Madeleine Brun is a well known and accomplished po portrait painter, having painted the Queen, Mar Queen Marie Antoinette herself. In fact, she is trusted to paint a picture of the Queen with her children. You shuffle your through nights, you're pretty certain you know where a studio is. If you go there, you might be able to commission a painting of Max, Margaret and Gabrielle. This would add an enormous air of credibility to any accusations you lay at Maximum's feet. Commissioning vengeance is available to visit on the Paris map. You should read, uh, You could reach out today if you liked. That's what we're going to do that now, aren't we? That's a bit of a... Yeah, we'll do that today. Explore Paris. do 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 do, do uh, yeah, if you'll if you bring your vengeance upon Maximum by proving his foul misdeeds, you'll need to commission a painter from an incredible painter. This is going to cost a bother too. You had you were you waste no time heading out heading out to go to Madame Labrune's studio. You're planning on showing up on unannounced studio of a great painter you've never met, all for the sake of vengeance. None of the stories about people seeking revenge truly prepare you for how socially awkward some of this business is. You are your student notice that door if you left a job, which is certainly I'd have a few minutes waiting to see if anyone's around you simply let yourself in. Instead you 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 find you find her sipping idly on some wine some wine while she prefers a canvas. The air is thick with the smell of canvas, gesso and paint. Not knowing how else to get her attention, you clear your throat. She turns around and nearly jumps out of her skin. Who the devil are you? Uh do do do, do. Portrait she has calmly uh Common quick place of curiosity is obviously peaked. I'll warn you now, I don't dare paint I don't I don't paint nudes of my clients. Even though you'd make an interest very interesting subject. Does it uh, how does using the art of painted to our wicked man sound for intriguing? Yeah, I like that one. Let's sit back and laugh after while she exam re examines your expression. Ah, oh, you're actually you're actually serious, she realises. I want to draw it destroy so I want you to paint, paint a paint that will destroy Baron Maximum de Tomez. The Baron... Ugh. Ugh. I'm sorry, I just hate the man. Did you ever know he called on my self-portraits uninspiring and selfish? It's a self-portrait. People have people have been painted them for, forever. It's a classic to have an artist's skill. She shakes her angrily. Honestly, why is it that, what, that when you paint... What, that when men paint pictures of themselves, they're engaging in a serious study. When I paint one, it's suddenly all about my vanity. So I got carried away there. I'll absolutely paint this, even if I get get to put that pretentious blowhard on his place. How how do you want me to do this? You spend a few minutes telling Elizabeth where to find Margaret Bonnet and exactly what the, exactly the paintings was deep in You don't need you don't know how you'll use the painting yet, but it still means that you're a step closer than you were before. With that depart with that you depart your vengeance your vengeance approach but your vengeance approaches. Twenty second Hmm. Okay. Right, another rendezvous with our man, Ludo Vicchio. Uh, provincial dress, yeah, that'll do. I'm not sure I'm a massive fan of this either, as well, because it's very easy to get exhausted. I suppose it's to stop you doing everything all at once. Anyway. Spending the. Did, yep. Yeah, we, yeah, we know that. Yeah, we know that. Credibility is a nightmare. You return to yep, we know that. Same again. Do, 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 do. Yeah, but I don't know how to use that favour though. It's still given the the eye. Yep, yep, yep. Fine. That's that's pretty much standard. That come. We need to do something different with him. That's the fourth time we've been there, but 
Price of food, stem, the price of food has been steadily rising for the last few months as many farmers lost nearly their entire harvest in last summer's unre- unseasonable hailstorms. This was followed by a drought, then one of the most brutal winters in over a cent- nearly a century. There are reports of starving people in the countryside boiling, uh, boiling bark to make gruel. Desperate commoners are abandoning their homes and fleeing to the cities for relief. The people are hungry. Members of the nobility, like Duke de Orleans, raise money to feed the poor, but the problem is that it's simply too vast for an individual charity to solve. Finance Minister Necker has spent over 50 million livres in Port and Grave Thirst of Europe, but the famine persists. People are hungry and angry. <laughs> Rumours circulate about wealthy aristocrats with secret stores of grain, purpose for extending the famine, but the lower wages improve their political powers. Workers are demanding higher wages from their bourgeoisie employees who remain intransient. People are hungry, angry, and they want something to, to, something, they want to do something about it soon. You wake up and out to let on your nightstand come in, must have put it there while you were still asleep. Over later you are she baffled by a wall of sloppy handwriting after a few moments of screen, of squinting the squiggles on the page look at actual words, apparently that is from your artist Elizabeth. After I finished my portrait of the two amazing subjects you introduced me to two, and I just know that anyone who sees it is going to find it's very surprising, even though you'll have to see it for yourself. Bless the structures you made and how to contact me whenever you're ready. Send me a message and I'll bring the painting over for one final evaluation. Bye now, one of you, Elizabeth. P.S. I have one more surprise for you, but you'll have to see it in person. Ooh. Okay, it's still early in the morning, you don't have any pressing. You can invite her over to see the painting today. Here we do, let's explore Paris. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, paint it's finished paint, yep. Yeah. yeah, visit location, we'll get that on today. The evening the house with the house prepared for guests, you wait for Elizabeth to arrive with the portrait. There's a knock on the door, I'll get it, Madame Camille calls cheerily from downstairs. A moment later, the door opens, Camille enters with Elizabeth, both work, w- working together to carry a portrait that's been covered with a sheet. They prop it against the fireplace, he didn't expect it to be this big, it's practically as tall as you are. It's so good to have guests in the house again, Camille ex- Explains with a barely contained glee. I'll go fetch everyone some refreshments. She curtsies to both you both before heading to the door. If Camille and ex- exits the room, she quickly replaces Marguerite. He seems to be doing her best to appear calm and collected. While it, while it's good, she's agreed to portrait being painted. You can tell the whole the festival makes her deeply uncomfortable. So this is at the beginning of early. She asks nervously. Uh, we, this is it. Well, good here, Margaret says with some relief. Especially because someone here hasn't let me see the painting yet. Margaret uh, continues glaring at Elizabeth. Why would I ruin this surprise? Can't you just allow a little bit of mystery in your life, Elizabeth? That's why adjusting the sheet that's covering the painting. When all your fam- romance and mystery could endanger me, and, well, all your romance and mystery could endanger me and my son. I get to be a sport sport, Margaret states flatly. Don't worry, it'll all be fun, we'll have in a few moments. Elizabeth replies, gripping the edge, edges of the sheet. Behold, Elizabeth calls out, pulling, the, pulling off the sheet, covering the painting with a single movement. <coughs> the room is silent, however, he takes it in. It is perfect. I could, I could you could deliver it with the original request, but I think it's worth it, Elizabeth says. But her own work is if she's seeing it for the first time. It's, hard to, it's not hard to know what she means. You've asked for a simple port of a milk, Margaret and her son Gabriel, but Elizabeth has carried the entire family scene. Marguerite, dressed in the uniform of a maid, sits with Gabriel on her knee, looking every bit the dutiful mother. Gabriel is dressed in sober, coloured but expensive clothes, befitting the state of, an inherit- of his inheritance. Uh, the resemblance to Maximum is, is absolutely uncanny. The biggest change, however, is that Elizabeth added Maximum himself to the painting. Classic! <laughs> That's fantastic! I actually painted the poisonous creature from memory. I hope he likes it, Elizabeth added proudly. In most family portraits, the father is used at the centre of the scene or in some position to show him as a protectoral leader. Not in this one here. Maxim is off to the side of the family, separate by some distance. His darkly, his darkly coloured coat blends with the shadows. This matched with his grim expression and looming stance makes him feel like a predator waiting to strike. Looking back at Gabriel and, Gab, Marguerite and Gabriel in the painting, you don't see the calm expression of a dutiful family. You see fear. It's... Elizabeth starts before Margaret cuts her off. I, it's how I feel, Margaret says, her voice trailing off. She looks simply stunned. It's, it's how I feel whenever I think about him. My work here is done, then, Elizabeth says, gathering up the sheet. Mercy be cool, Elizabeth. Will I see you again soon? 
Me, of course, he wants you plus turn it turn towards the door. The last second she turns back. Oh, I almost forgot your supply. She rolls for the pockets and pulls out that silver deep wax. The cell's already been broken. It looks like Maximus holding a saloon, uh, holding a saloon in a few days, throwing off a bunch of new paintings from artists he sponsors. I know that he only invited me so he could brag about their revolutionary work and all their ex extremely deep meanings. I think you you might have a better time than I will. Excellent. We've got the invitation. As you look down the invitation, you can feel a wicked grin form on your lips. This is at the moment you can destroy Maximum in front of all his sycophants. Now, I'm actually going to leave her as a next space before going to the door. She walks down the stairs and you hear her let herself out. Margaret is still standing, still staring at the painting, her face a mixture of awe and horror. It's a strange to see how I feel up, on, up in a great big painting, she whispers. So you never will know the truth about him. I can't wait. I can't wait to live my life in peace. To not have to look over my shoulder whenever I leave the cafe. I might even be able to get a full night's sleep. That would be nice. Okay, <laughs> manically goes on a pair of them. When I only liked them, tier one, Camilla, I sent her in the room with a variety of refreshments and snacks on a tray. Hmm. Where did my, like Madame Lebrunga, Camilla, asked, looking for the room in confusion. She left the lane to leave two Margaret Pies, taking one snack for a tray and then another. I'm opening shift the cafe tomorrow. Margaret turns to you, her eyes look both tired and hopeful. Thank you for doing this. I know this isn't, isn't just all just to benefit me, but I still appreciate what you're doing. With that, Margaret takes a thirst act from the tray and leaves. Oh well then, Camilla looks down at her, mostly in touch for her, so I'll simply have to put these everything. I'll sort of to, I'll, I shall simply have to have everything prepared for guests sooner. Uh, would you like some with any of this? Some tea, a glass of wine would be nice. Uh, I'll have whatever it is that Marguerite seems to have taken so much of. Oh, we may have uh, Camille cheese, the cheerily pies. And place a variety of different uh, hordes of doivers on your desk. You nibble at them all, so spend the rest of the evening contently examining your position and plans are yet to come. This is the day. Is it? I forgot me if I can remember, but here we go. Accept. Right. Close. And that is today. So, with that, I think we're going to leave it here. Things that. Things that, that I question in the game that maybe I'm not understanding correctly. We're getting a lot of favour with him, but. When do we use it? We've get we're getting all this credibility with him, but when do you use it? That's one question I've got. Obviously, question for you guys in the comments to answer if you know the if you know the answer. When do we get to use all these favors? All these favors we're getting with him. That's one. How do I arrange? I want to arrange. Uh, let's uh, all right, let's well, let's pick a. So you can't do it for the. So you got to do it for the following weeks. We can pick. We can go for that one. Let's do let's do that one. Let's do that one. So we've got we've only one of Oh, I should have done, I've not thought one through ever actually. Oh well. Yeah, that's gonna be a bit of a. Mm, yeah, I didn't think I went through at all. Actually, I can cancel that one. Waiting response. <sighs> yep. So I'm gonna get. Come to, I'm gonna have a lot of exhaustion. I'm have to, yeah, I didn't think I should have put it for later in the week because I'm gonna get that one there and we'll have exhaustion that one and that one and that one. It's gonna bomb my credibility, so it chronic, but oh well. Right, I know, yeah, so credibility it's very, very easy to lose it, scarily so. It's difficult to gain it, but easy to lose it. Peril, I can only see one we're using it is go to parties and give money, but that doesn't seem to do an awful lot. So, I'd love to know how I can get rid of Peril and the level of exhaustion just absolutely kills I suppose it's designed to stop you just doing everything for a week but it's kind of like yeah that after that for example we're going to be up to like level we've got three four four we're going to say we're level we're going to be level five we're to there and that is not going to be good but kind of it's going to be zero anyway it's not going to, going to matter so yeah so it's kind of how do we use favors Credibility, it seems very, very easy to lose credibility. Whatever you do, you lose credibility. I've tanked it several times. But how do we get rid of a peril? Could we get an awful lot of it? How do we get rid of it other than donate, buy the host wine at a buy? But anyway, that's all for you guys to tell me in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed that. And so I'm, miss, I'm just, I'm quick for this, I'm missing anything. 
I said, I'm very pretty. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, very pretty. Anyway, I said, do, 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 do. So we walk again. Well, I'm also thinking going back to go back to the calendar. At some point, we need to get a new dress because we're running out of outfits. But anyway, right. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye.